वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन इनटू द क्लास ऑफ नंबर थ्योरी एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कंटिन्यू विद मोर एंड मोर प्रॉब्लम्स बेस्ड ऑन अर्थमेटिक फंक्शंस सो लेट अस डिस्कस सम प्रॉब्लम्स एंड आई थिंक टू और थ्री मोर वीडियोस विल बी सफिशिएंट टू क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ अर्थमेटिक फंक्शंस सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद सम एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ अर्थमेटिक फंक्शंस सो देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन और यू कैन से थ्योरम प्रूव दैट Prove that sigma n over n is equal to summation one upon d, where d varies over the divisors of n. So d is a divisor of n. So we we'll have to prove this result. This is very easy to prove this result. It's not difficult at all. But the concept must be clear in your mind what we are going to do. So let n b any positive integer that means natural number and let d1 d2 d3 and so on d k be all the divisors of n let these be all the divisors of n now one thing is clear that this k k this is equal to dn the number of divisors of n it should be clear because here you are having all the divisors so last divisor must be the number of divisors must be the equal to dn so last will be if you are naming it as d1 d2 d3 the last should be d of dn now one more thing i'll try to make it clear to you by an example suppose this number n is 24 then what are the, all the divisors are all the divisors are 1 2 3 4 6 8 12 24 and 24 focus on what you get if you divide each of the, these divisors by 24 so that means if you divide this one by 24 24 upon 1 24 upon 2 24 upon 3 24 upon 4 24 upon 6 24 upon 8 24 upon 12 24 upon 24 what you are going to get 24 upon 1 is clearly 24 nothing it s 24 upon 2 is 12 24 upon 3 is 8 24 upon 4 is 6 24 upon 6 is 4 24 upon 8 is 3 24 upon 12 is 2 and 24 upon 24 is 1 so have you noted one thing that once again you get the same numbers as you were having already that means if you divide all the divisors of n by uh, if you divide n by all the divisors of n once again you will get the same set of divisors of n so that what i am going to use here d1 d2 d3 dk these are all the divisors of n so if you divide each of these by n sorry if you divide n by each of these that means note that note that n upon d1 n upon d2 n upon d3 and so on n upon dk is also is also the set of all divisors of n that means these numbers and these numbers they are same just the order is being reversed d1 is n upon dk if you have taken this in increasing or decreasing order then the first one becomes the last one the last one becomes the first one so let us see uh, 
Sigmaen. What is sigma n? Sigma n is the sum of divisors. So sigma n is in fact d1 plus d2 plus d3 plus d and so on plus dk. This is the value of sigma n. You know it very well because of the previous video. So if sum of all these is sigma n, sum of these all must also be sigma n because these are also the divisors of n. So adding these, adding these, what you are going to get, you are going to get equal to, you are going to get equal to sigma n. Now from right hand side, you can take n common. So sigma n is equal to n times 1 upon d1 plus 1 upon d2 plus and so on plus 1 upon dk. Take this n to the denominator of the left hand side. You will get sigma n upon n is equal to and the bracket this 1 upon d1 plus 1 upon d2 plus 1 upon dk you can write it as sigma 1 upon d where what is d? d is a divisor of n and this is the result what we wanted to prove and I think it will be clear to you very much clear to you and one basic thing what you must keep in your mind for the uh, upcoming problems that the set of all the divisors and the set of the numbers obtained by dividing n by each of the divisors they are same. So this concept we will use in the upcoming problems as well. So this was the first problem of the day and now I am moving on to another question, another problem from arithmetic functions. So let us see what the next problem is. The next problem, the next question or you can say the next theorem, whatever you want to say, what I am going to take is for n belonging to n, that means for every positive integer n or you can say for every natural number n, we have, we have product of all the divisors of n product of d, where what is d? d is the divisor of n, that means the product of all the divisors of n is equal to n raised to the power dn by 2. What is dn? dn is the number of divisors of n. So this result we are going to prove now. And the same concept we will use that we have used in the previous term. So I am going to rub this statement because we are going to prove it, I need the space. So I am rubbing it and I am moving on to the solution. So let us see what the solution suggests. Let n be any positive integer, any natural number. Let d1, d2, d3, dk be the set of all divisors of n where k is obviously dn the number of divisors of n it should be clear as we have discussed in the previous problem if you divide n by each of these divisors once again you will get the set of divisors so note that note that n upon d1 n upon d2, n upon d3 and so on, n upon dk is also the same set of divisors of n. That means, that means this set and this set, they are same. Maybe the order of elements will be different. Maybe d1 equal to some n by d4 if, it, if they are not arranged in increasing or decreasing order. Otherwise, if it is arranged in increasing or decreasing order, the first one becomes the last one and the last one becomes the first one. Otherwise, they may be huffle and shuffle in some order. Let 
let P be the product of all these divisors d1 to dk. So let P is equal to d1, d2, d3 and so on dk. Now look at if you multiply all these n by d1 into n by d2 into n by d3 and so on into n by dk what it is equal to it is also equal to p because these numbers and these numbers are same in some in some different order so that means the product of these elements and the product of these elements must be same if the product of these is p the product of these must also be p now multiply these two multiplying these two p into p square you will, sorry, p into p you will get p square is equal to and if you multiply right hand side this d1 into 1 upon d1 will become n this d2 into n upon d2 again n this d3 into n upon d3 again n and so on in the last once again you will get n how many times this is k times so n into n into n k times and n into n into n k times means n raised to the power k. So this means p is n raised to the power k. p is n raised to the power k. Sorry, not p. p square. p square is n raised to the power k. Take square root on both sides. Take square root on both sides. So p will become equal to n raised to the power k by 2. Now what is p? p is the product of all divisors of n. So this p you can write as product of d where d divides n is equal to. On the other side n raised to the power k by 2. And what is k? k is dn. So n raised to the power dn by 2 and this is the result what we wanted to prove. So this is another important useful application of arithmetic function and then we will we will have more and more questions more and more practice on this concept of arithmetic functions before going on to the next chapter. I need three or more, four more videos to discuss these problems these arithmetic functions exclusively. So let us have another question, another question based on arithmetic functions. Let it be if n is uh, p power alpha q power beta where p q are distinct odd primes, distinct odd primes then sigma n is greater than 2n sorry sigma n is less than 2n n is the number p power alpha q power beta p and q are distinct odd primes and we have to show that sigma n is less than 2n. So let us see how to prove this. We are given that n is p power alpha and q power beta. So what is sigma n? Sigma n is as we proved it the other day in the other video that it is equal to p raised to the power alpha plus 1 minus 1 over p minus 1 into q raised to the power beta plus 1 minus 1 upon q minus 1 using the formula of sigma n if n is given in the canonical form. 
So it is equal to you take p raised to the power alpha plus one common from here and p common from here. So that means p power alpha one com plus one common from the numerator one minus one upon p raised to the power alpha plus one divided by p common from the denominator one minus one upon p. The same step I'll repeat in the second term of the product. Q raised to the power beta plus one. 1 minus 1 upon q raised to the power beta plus 1 divided by q common 1 minus 1 upon q is equal to this p raised to the power alpha plus 1 upon p is p power alpha this q raised to the power beta plus 1 upon q it is q raised to the power beta into I am writing this first 1 minus 1 upon p and this also 1 minus 1 upon q and now let us talk about these two terms 1 minus something positive so 1 minus something positive is definitely less than 1 so I am going to use this is less than 1 into the same this is also less than 1. So what you are going to get? This P alpha Q beta. This is N. P alpha Q beta is N. Now rest you are having 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon P into 1 minus 1 upon Q. Now I will need space so I am rubbing some steps from here to have proof completed. Now what are P and Q? P and Q are distinct odd primes. Distinct odd primes. So what is the minimum possible values of P and Q? These are 3 and 5. Maybe P3, maybe Q5. So P is definitely greater than or equal to 3. And Q is definitely greater than or equal to 5. Taking a reciprocal, 1 upon P is less than or equal to 1 upon 3. And 1 upon Q is less than or equal to 1 upon 5. Multiplying by negative sign, both these inequalities, the sign of inequality will change. So what you will get? Minus 1 upon P is greater than or equal to minus 1 upon 3 and minus 1 upon q is greater than or equal to minus 1 upon 5 add 1 to both sides of these both inequalities so 1 minus 1 upon p 1 minus this 1 minus 1 upon q 1 minus this 1 minus 1 upon 3 is 2 upon 3 so this is 2 upon 3 and similarly 1 minus 4, 1 upon 5 is 4 upon 5 and now take reciprocal taking reciprocal once again the sign will change so what you will get 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon p is less than or equal to 3 by 2 and 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon q is less than or equal to 5 upon 4 and now multiply these two inequalities to get 1 upon this 1 upon 1 minus p into 1 minus 1 upon q is less than or equal to 3 by 2 into 5 by 4. You will get 15 by 8. So this quantity, this quantity is less than or equal to 15 by 8. So it is less than or equal to 15 upon 8 and and we know that this 15 by 8 is definitely less than 16 by 8. That means 2. So it is going to be less than 2. And so what we have proved that uh, our sigma n from where we have started, sigma n is less than 2n. That was the required result to be proved. So this is a very interesting problem of arithmetic functions using the various properties of number theory and the definition of 
सिग्मा एन द आर्थमेटिक फंक्शन ऑफ सम ऑफ डिवाइजर्स ऑफ एन नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आर्थमेटिक फंक्शन दैट इज मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन एंड कंप्लीटली मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन सो मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन एंड मल्टीप्ली कंप्लीटली मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन लेट एस मूव ऑन टू द डेफिनेशन फर्स्ट एंड देन विल मूव ऑन टू द प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन अर्थमेटिक फंक्शन एंड मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन बोथ मल्टीप्लीकेटिव फंक्शन if sorry a function a function in fact arithmetic function an arithmetic function f is said to be multiplicative multiplicative function if f of mn is equal to f of m f of n for every m n belonging to n whenever whenever gcd of m and n is 1 for any two co prime numbers m and n f m n is equal to f m f n this is the definition of multiplicative function and a little bit change here will make will make it completely multiplicative function so definition completely completely multiplicative function an arithmetic function f is said to be completely completely multiplicative function if fmn is equal to ff fm fn for every mn belonging to n and this condition will be relaxed now for completely multiplicative function mn and need not be co prime gcd of mn need not be one for any two uh, values of mn and fmn is equal to fmn fn and then the function will be completely multiplicative function so with this definition i'm going to end this video here in the next video we will discuss problems based on com uh, multiplicative function completely multiplicative functions and arithmetic functions till then thank you thank you once again